will use your desire to hypnotize follow the pendulum follow the pendulum wherever it goes let your eyes follow oh my 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 there's so much you need to do isn't there so you need to keep your eyes peeled right here because I'm going to keep you busy. I'll give you whatever you need. Money. Position. Lover. <laughs> Pat's Two Cents. We are here for Tuesday Bible Study. We're dealing with Judges chapter 7. Then Jerubbabel, who was in Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall go, not go with thee, the same shall not go with thee. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink, Think about that upon his knees. Think of the posture. Keep that in your mind. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Mm, mm, mm. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By 300 men that lappeth, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took vittles in their hands and their trumpets and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent and retained those 300 men and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. Hmm. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down into the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Purah, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shalt thine hand be strengthened to go down into the host. Then went he down with Purah into his servant, unto the outside of the army outside of the armed men that were in the host and the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude and when Gideon was come that means there were so many of them can't even count and when Gideon was come behold there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. 
Boy, if that ain't a confirmation, I don't know what is. <laughs> and it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand a host of Midian. And he divided the 300 men, 300 now, <laughs> into three companies which means a hundred apiece, all right. And he put a trumpet in every man's hand and empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. Mm, mm, mm. Do you get the symbolism? A trumpet, what is a trumpet in the Bible? The trumpet in these days is our mouth. The lamp is the anointing, the light, the burning light of the Holy Ghost in us. All right, keep moving now. This is symbolism. A lot of people don't catch these things. And he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. And what is the version of that? Behold the perfect man. Mm. Wow. For the end of that man is peace. And he said, look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, and I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pictures that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the 300 men blew the trumpets. That's all they did, y'all. They just blew the trumpets. Show you how much authority we have over darkness, over the works of darkness, over the powers of darkness. Let me move on. I digress. Okay, so, so they ran and cried and fled. And the 300 blew the trumpets and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. And even throughout all the hosts and the hosts fled to Bethsheba and Zerarath and the border of abel Meoloa unto Tabath. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of all Man Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. You notice what happened? There was confusion. The trumpets caused the enemy confusion. They were so confused, they were attacking and killing each other. All Midian, I mean, all Gideon had were the, the men with trumpets and lamps. The word of God and the anointing and fire of the Holy Ghost. That's all he had. Let me interject right here. You notice, not a gun, not a weapon, not a bomb, not a bazooka. Think about all of that. Not a bow and arrow, not a fist, not a foot. Not cuss words. None of that. Nothing was you. No knives. Huh? No switchblade. Nothing was used. But the holy weapons of God. The word and the anointing. The authority God gave over the works of darkness. Hmm. Think about it. Ha <laughs> ha. 300 men, a very small, a very small remnant to do the work, the mighty work of God. And all these thousands of, of, of company that was against them, they did their work for them. They killed each other under the confusion. Mm. All right, that's, that's, that's a sight. I would have loved to have seen that. See the power of God working like that. All right. Listen, you guys. A lot of times we think that there has to be something big, monumental. We can't use a nobody. 
like Lynn. We can't use a nobody like Pat. We can't use a nobody like Rashad. We can't use a nobody like Key. And we can't use no, a nobody like Peter. We're too small. But not in God's math. Not in God's mathematical schemes. We may be the unknown. We may, we may be the no-name folks. The unsung heroes, so to speak. But God can do mighty things through small entities. He sent all those 20-something thousand people home and narrowed that whole thing down to 300. What made the difference between the, the company of 10,000 and the 300 he pulled out of them? What made the difference, y'all? Let me describe it to you <clears throat> so I can kind of demonstrate. For those of you who can turn on your cameras, turn on your cameras so you can see what I'm doing. If you're busy, watch the video, the whole video, later. All right. Now, when he told the men to go down and drink at the water, the ones that got on their knees, what does the posture of getting on your knees represent? Worship. There are people in this day and age who worship their appetites, their physical desires, their bodily needs more than they worship the things of God. Some don't even think about God. But let me share this with you. These men, they got on their knees and they bent down and gave their whole body all their energy, listen to this, y'all, all their attention to the water. And they, on their knees, they drip their face into the water and they, they just go, 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 go. Not, not looking around, not being, anybody could have walked up to them and stabbed them in the back and they wouldn't have known it was coming because everything about them was geared toward their appetite. Their appetite, their thirst. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are people, so many people in this world, even born again Christians, that are so given to their appetites, their feelings, their thoughts, their needs, their money, their job, their this, their that, their pride, their ego, whatever the case may be, that they don't see anybody or anything. They're not aware of what's going on around them because they're too caught up in the things that pertain to me, the here, the now. All right. They have that feed me, feed me mentality or the other one I love that Joyce Meyer says, what about me? 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 And that is what was in that brook, drinking that water. All those thousands of men had their faces, their bodies engulfed in getting this water into them. Oblivious to everything else going on around them. Think of the posture. God wants people that watch and pray. Not just pray, 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 pray. Watch and pray. They know what's going on. They're discerning. They're deciphering. They're praying. They're asking God. They're, they're getting revelation. Why? Because they're aware. But the 300 men, what did they do? Like true soldiers, they reached into the water, scooped the water up in their hand, heads up, eyes looking and alert lapping the water like dogs. Why? If something came up on them, they would be aware. They would be alert. They would be on guard. They would be in position in the right posture to be able to get into a defense mode. Drop the water. Let's get to defending oneself. They weren't worshiping the appetite. They were watchful. They were aware. 
Their eyes were above their hands. Their eyes were above the water. Their mindset was above their appetite. Think about that. Those are the kind of people God is looking for in these last days. Which one are you? Which one are you? Hmm. Are you easily given to the wiles of the flesh? Whether it be attitude, whether it be sensual, whether it be uh, entertainment, whatever. Are you easily given to the works? I, I watch people sometimes when, you know, how family gets together and they turn the TV on in the living room. And it's almost as if once the TV goes on, all conversation comes to an immediate halt. Why? Because everybody's attention is glued to the tube. And this is the, the expression I want to share with you. I know you've seen it when you watch your, your family members and your friends watch TV. I have a friend that does this all the time. She cracks me up. When something's on and she's really into it, she's like, You call her name, huh? Huh? I mean, it's almost like coming out of a trance. What? What? Waking her up out of a out of a deep slumber. She's caught up. She's in the tube. She's not just watching it. She's in it. Same way these soldiers, they're in the water. They're not just drinking it. They're in it. And there are many Christians out there that are in the world. They're in the system. They're in everything that's going on. They're not standing off watching, being aware, being alert, discerning, being on guard. No, they're all in it, all into Beyonce, all into to, to all these different singers and rappers and all these actors and Brad Pitt and Angel Angelina Jolie. They can name, 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 name. They know how many kids they got. They know how long they've been married. They know where they live. They know what they do. They know what movies they've been in. Oh, my goodness. They just know it all out there. But they wouldn't know a demon if it walked up and slapped them in the face. Because they're so engrossed in what's happening to their appetite. Think about that. See, God is not looking for big name anything. He's not looking for the wonders of society, the world renowns, the, the, the household names. No, he's not looking for that. He's looking for people with the right attitude, people who are watchful. Think about that. People who are seeking God. People who are not believing everything they hear coming across the airwaves. Who is the prince of the air? Who's the prince of the air, y'all? Mm-hmm. What's his face? That's right. And a lot of people are caught up in everything that's happening in that, in that atmosphere. They're caught up right in, this, right in this little arena here. You can go in a complete circle. Complete circle. All right. And they don't even realize how caught up they are. This is what God is looking for. He's looking for people who will deny themselves and follow him. Do you know when you deal with the special ops, you deal with those special guerrilla warfare type people, the Green Beret, the all of these these high named uh, 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 military warfare people that I mean they know how to survive on the elements. They know how to make something out of nothing and make themselves warm and and and, and keep their bodies saturated through all kind of plant life. They know what insects are great for protein and and not harmful to the body, even eaten raw. They know all this. They know how to sneak up on their opponent and they never see them coming and whoop, it's over. They know when someone's sneaking up on them and they outsmart them every time. Why? They're aware. They're listening. They're paying attention. Well, those are the same type of people that can be hanging off of a cliff and they can get a hold of something 
but the only way they can save their life is to cut off their own limb. And they have a mind to be able to cut off their own limb. Now, if that ain't self-denial, baby, I don't know what is. Because what they're saying is, I can live without my leg. But I'm not going to die with my leg. The only way I can get free is to detach myself from myself. Do you hear it? I'm getting it as I'm saying it. The only way to survive this whole last day's thing is to detach myself from myself. So I must cut this limb off or this limb may cost me my life. And they are able to endure the pain. Think about that. Of cutting off their own limb. No anesthesia. No painkiller. It's the raw deal, baby. They don't have a surgical knife. So it's not a clean slice. Like it is when you're slicing a banana. No. It's a painful inch by inch sawing and cutting and screaming and yelling and agonizing pain in order to save one's own life. So you're detaching yourself from yourself. That's the kind of mindset. That's the kind of determination you have to have in order to do certain levels of spiritual warfare, in order to survive. There are times when you have to cut yourself off from family, from friends, from jobs, from influences, from influential people, from important people from money, whatever it is you have to separate yourself from, whatever it is you have to cut out of your life. If you really, really, really want to be a warrior for the Lord, if you really want to be a servant of God, if you really want to make an impact on society, on other people's lives, whether it be one by one, two by two, crowd by crowd, multitude by multitude, mass by masses, whatever. The bottom line is, if you want to really make an anointed difference, you've got to be willing to pay the cost to be the boss, baby. Because you ain't going to run nothing if you can't control your own appetites. You're not going to be able to run a thing and pat anybody else if you can't control your mouth, if you can't control your attitude, if you can't control your behavior, if you can't su uh, suppress your, your, your appetite, your sexual appetite. Your frugal, your, your fun and entertainment appetites, the time you spend on frivolity. Yes, you're allowed to play. Yes, you're allowed to have fun. There's no sin in that. But how do you spend that time? How do you entertain yourself? What do you do? Are there any days, any hours, any minutes set aside for what you do for the Lord? Because it's only what you do for Christ that will last. Amen? All right. So, I want you to think about that when you feel the calling of God on your life to serve God. So, when you, you're looking to see how to serve God, you want to make sure that you are one of those 300. One of those that God counts worthy to serve him. One of those God looks at you and says, I can count on him. I can count on her. I can count on them. They'll get the job done at 
whatever cost, whatever price they have to pay, they will get the job done by any means necessary for me. That's what I want to hear God say about me. And I know I don't always give God my best. Never have always given him my best. Wanted to, but sometimes my laziness gets in the way. Sometimes my tiredness gets in the way. Sometimes I just want to sit on my little rumpty dumpty and be entertained. I'm just being honest. I'm human too, y'all. I'm not preaching something that I have arrived. I'm challenged by this word as well. Trust me. So the bottom line is we have to constantly be seeking God for perfection, for higher levels of living, for higher levels of attitude. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Your attitude is low down and raunchy, so will your altitude be. You won't have much of an altitude. You live on the low levels of life. God wants to take us to the high places of life. Are you willing to go there by any means necessary? Are you willing to go with God at any cost? Are you? Really? Really? Really?